Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how easy it is to install an open source shopping cart on a shared web hosting account. Uh, this way you can have your own website instead of relying on third party platforms like Etsy, eBay, or even Artfire. So uh, basically the installation is pretty easy and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. So before we begin, you're going to need to have a few items already set up. So the first thing you need is to sign up for a web host. Now, what is a web host? A web host is someone who actually hosts a whole bunch of computers for you to run your website on. Now, the two web hosts that I recommend are Bluehost and HostGator. Um, so Bluehost, I actually ran my online store for two years on Bluehost. Uh, it's really cheap, it's only $6.95 a month, and it offers all the features that you need to run a full-blown online store. Now the second web host I also recommend is HostGator. Uh, I actually ran my wife quit her job on HostGator for a year and a half before I finally switched over to dedicated hosting. Now the second thing you need to do is you need to find a domain name for your shop. Now if you sign up for Bluehost they actually give you a domain for free so you actually don't need to sign up for one. So um, basically your domain is just the name of your shop, the address that it's going to reside in uh, when you type into the address bar of your uh, web browser. Uh, the last thing you need to do is once you sign up with your web host you need to ask them for what is called SSH access to the server. Now what is SSH access? It's basically a way for you to get on your server and control the different aspects of it uh, through a terminal. I'll show you an example in this tutorial uh, when we get to that point. Usually uh, they'll ask you for some sort of ID and usually you have to basically fax over a copy of your driver's license or something in order to get this SSH access. Uh, you also need a way to transfer files from your PC to your web server and I recommend a program called WinSCP for this and this is for Windows only. Uh, for Mac I think you can use something like FileZilla or something like that. Now you'll also need a program called Putty. Uh, if you do a search on Google for P-U-T-T-Y you'll find it and that's the example I'm going to show you today uh, how to install it using Putty which is just a terminal. And then finally you're going to need a web browser. So once you have all these things ready you are now ready to take part in this tutorial. Okay, so the next part you need to do, of course, is you need to go onto the site and download your free shopping cart. So for this example, I'm going to use OpenCart as an example. OpenCart is a fantastic shopping cart that's very feature rich, and the best part is it's absolutely free. So first thing you need to do is go to www.opencart.com and download the free shopping cart. And once you're ready, I'm now going to show you how to install it. So I've actually already downloaded it to my PC. And what you're looking at right here is WinSCP, which is a way to transfer files from my PC to the web server. So here is my OpenCart file, and I'm just going to drag it to my web host here, and that's it. I've already done this in the past, so I'm not going to do it again. And then once you're on there, you need to then open this program called Putty. And I've already gone ahead and logged in. And basically what I'm going to do with this program is I'm basically just going to unpack as you can see, the open card deliverable here is actually a zip file, which means it's a compressed archive of many files. So the first thing I need to do is I need to unzip that file into my web server. And all that stuff actually got unzipped into this open cart directory here. So the next thing I need to do is I'm just, oh, this, this directory here is actually really long so I'm just going to shorten it. So in the guts of this open card directory I'm going to take the guts of the shopping cart and then just rename it to something more uh, easier to type into when I go into my browser. So I'm just going to name this um, OC15 uh, for short. Okay, And that's basically all I need to do with PuTTY. And at this point all I need to do is go to my web browser and I'm just going to type in, this is my domain that I registered, bumblebeeblanky.com. And I'm just going to go into the OC15 directory, which is where I've installed my shopping cart stuff. And as you can see here, there's a nice menu that OpenCart provides to walk you through the installation process. So I'm just going to click on I agree to the license. And I see all this green stuff here that says that everything's good to go. 
I'm going to click continue. And then finally here, it's going to ask me for my database uh, parameters. And the way shopping carts work is there's a front end and then there's a database that stores all of your products and all of your customer information and all that stuff. So in order to create a database, you actually need to log into the control panel for your web server. And typically all that is, usually the address for this web for your control panel is usually just your domain name, name colon and then 2083 so if you type that into the web browser you'll get something like this that looks like this which is your control panel for your web server and what you need to do is you need to go down and look for this tab called my SQL databases and then click on it and you need to create a new database so I'm just gonna call this one OC151 I'm gonna create that database okay so that database has been created right here and now I'm just gonna add a user that I've created already which is test and I'm gonna associate it as a user for that new database that I created and I'm just gonna click add here I'm gonna give all privileges to this user and now my database is created with the username bumble underscore test as the as the user and the database bumble underscore OC151 as the database name. So at this point, I'm just going to go back to the shop, the open cart installation window. And I'm just going to type in this information. So bumble underscore test, and then the password, which I just wrote as testing123. And the database name was bumble underscore OC151. And I'm just going to make up something for the administration. I'm just going to make the username admin and the password testing123. And then just an email, just use my email here. And then I'm just going to hit continue. And at this point, my shopping cart has already been installed. So I thought I'd just give you a quick tour now that it's installed. So if I click on go to my online shop, this is what the default install looks like. And it actually comes pre-populated with dummy items. And once you've installed it, you can play around with it a little bit. Click on some items, add to cart, and then you can even do a sample checkout. Um, it's really nice. As you play around with this open cart, it's really nice. It's everything you would expect from a fully featured shopping cart that you might pay for. Now, what's cool about this is this is the front end. I'm going to show you now what the administration back end looks like as well. So I'm just going to click on log into your administration. And if you recall, the username was admin and the password was testing123. So it's here that you can actually manage all of your products and all of your orders on this screen. As you can see, it's pretty feature risk rich. You can actually access your products, change the prices, the quantities, and that sort of thing. There's a whole bunch of extensions, shipping modules. You can do a lot of creative stuff. You can accept credit cards really easily because there's a whole bunch of these payment um, you know, payment modules already installed. You can accept PayPal, Authorized.net, authorized and many other popular credit card companies. Um, you can offer different shipping styles. Um, there's a real easy way to handle returns, coupons, and that sort of thing. In a nutshell, it's basically everything that you need to run a full-blown online store for free, essentially. The only thing you have to pay for is the cost of hosting, which is on the order of between 5 and $7 a month. And, you know, as I emphasized in some of my previous articles, owning your own domain and your own store is the best way to run your business because you own the platform and you own everything about your business and you are in full control over everything.